training scouting the surroundings. During its first years, the community suffered heavily from attacks by Arabs living in the region. Following the 1920 Arab riots, the town was evacuated for several months. After World War I in 1923, the borders of the region were established as part of an agreement between France and Britain. The border of Israel was laid only 30 meters beyond the last building north of the village. There is no doubt that the existence of Matula ensured that this region would be included as part of the land of Israel. However, the farmers lost their lands beyond the border in Lebanon. This land was so fertile, stories were told that when a farmer would come face to face with a snake, he could not even find a stone in the earth to hit it with. During the Independence War in 1948, the IDF captured territories inside Lebanon up to the Latani River. In the ceasefire agreement, signed with Lebanon in 1949, these territories were given back to the Lebanese, and the border returned to the backyard of Matula. During the 50s and 60s, Matula enjoyed a peaceful and secure border, which enabled the village to grow and develop. This quiet period came to an end in the late 60s, when Palestinian terror groups, who had fled from Jordan, started taking control over territories in Lebanon. These territories, mainly on the slopes of Mount Hermon in front of us, were nicknamed Fatahland. In 1975, a passage was opened at the border to allow the residents of southern Lebanon to enter Israel. The passage, which is beyond the mountain behind us, was called the Fatahlands. For many years, thousands of Lebanese came through to work in Israel. Military and terror activities along this border continued for many years, ultimately leading to the Lebanon War in 1982. For 18 years, the IDF maintained its presence in Lebanon until a complete withdrawal was made in the year 2000. Since that time, the border is quiet, but tension exists. Today, there are 450 families living in Metula, making their living from agriculture, tourism, and public services. Orchards that surround the village are changing color and shape with the seasons. Quality of life here is high, and the residents enjoy good local services and a well-developed educational system. Inside the village, you can see a high building with sloped roofs. This is the Canada Center, used as a sport and recreation center with many attractions. To the right and below the center is the water well, which served the village in the early days. It has been restored by the Jewish National Fund. Stories of the first settlers to Matula are told in the local museum on the main street of the village. To the left, looking north, you can see an abandoned quarry inside Lebanon. Just above it is the village of El Kalea, and beyond that is the regional town of Marjayoun. To the right of Matula, in the valley below us, is the Yon Nature Reserve and the unique Tanur Waterfall. Water flows abundantly in the winter and spring, and the hike there is highly recommended. Further to the right is the village of Kfar Yuval. Looking to the right and south, you can see Kibbutz Kfar Giladi, the first kibbutz in the region.